Oh, hello everyone. Just working on my international planter here. Uh, I have an air leak on this side somewhere, so I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. If it's in the hoses, it's in the tanks. Also, I needed to change a few uh, bearings in my depth wheels, so changing them. Just got a call from the elevator though and says our bean contract needs to be filled, so let's get to it. Before we go and get the truck loaded, I need to change the Alice Chalmers, our bi-directional tractor here, off the chisel and onto the cultivator. My cousin's coming down here again, and she's going to be chiseling this field. So if you look up there, ground temperature is already 52 degrees, so it's getting mighty close to planting time so we need to get this nice and ready prepped for planting so if you don't know we put manure on this field here and we already chiseled it in now we need to make a nice smooth planting uh, surface also before I get to that I've been having troubles with my uh, water pumps Hello, cow. So I'm just making sure that cattle have water, so... I think I hear that pump running. That's a good sign there. That's a good sign. So, been having problems with them for whatever reason. Don't want the cattle running out of water. Alright, let's start this uh, tractor up quickly. Old Alice starts up nicely. It's pretty warm this morning, 65 degrees. So it looks like we need to also fill it up with uh, fuel. So we'll stop by over here and fill up the tank. So it looks like my gauge isn't reading correctly because I know I have fuel in there. Alright, so now the question is where do I put my chisel? I think I'll just park it right in front of the other chisel. I think we are basically done with chisels for a little while. So the chisels will get to hang out here together in their uh, summer home. Now I believe I park the cultivator. Yep, there it is. The old Alice cultivator. Parked it over there. I need to get that sprayer running too. That's another project. I've been running up the list with projects. Also, good news is I think I found a farmer that could possibly is interested in uh, hiring us out or contracting us out at least. Looks like I backed up a little bit too far. I can't see that hitch pin very easily with this tractor so which is unfortunate, so I kind of have to guide it. I'm not the best at it because I'm not used to his tractor yet. So, as I was saying, uh, Farmer Jim called me. He's interested in, in possibly hiring us, so I would like to go talk to him. Uh, go look over his operation, make sure it's what will be good for us in him. So I know I have 300, over 300. Ooh, that's mighty close to them Highline. Lines. Ooh, we're gonna have to be close. Gonna have to be careful with that. If they ever get droopy or get some uh, ice on them, then we might be problem childs there. Definitely don't want to hit two highline lines together. So we'll shut our old uh, Alice Chalmers off here. I really like this tractor because the two stacks. I think it looks great. It's just kind of unique. You don't usually see two stacks like that on a bi-directional tractor. Uh, but anyways, Farmer Jim called, and I would like to go see his operation this afternoon. But first, we need to get that ready for our cousin. Check, that's done. And now we need to start up our top kick and fill it up with soybean. So 
our loading spout is on the other side of these buildings so we're gonna run over here quickly get this loaded up with beans we're loading up here almost loaded oh I'm gonna have to cut it off here quickly so we're headed down our driveway our cousin just called us actually and she's on her way so we might see her uh, we might cross paths on our way to the elevator co-op isn't too far from us so I know I have a little truck but I'm not dealing with a big operation honestly so don't know maybe in the future I need to think about upgrading my uh, grain hauling capability on this farm but for right now I think it's adequate uh, that's like what I was saying that uh, 300,000 oh wow Wow, almost a head-on collision with her there. So luckily, we did not hit, but that was kind of a blind spot there. Don't want to get a head-on collision, especially with family. All right, this is our turn right in here to the co-op. So this is a really hard turn. You gotta turn, 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 and turn. We'll pull in right here. I'm pretty sure Jim said he was he's located somewhere around here don't know for sure I'll have to get direction all right so we're unloading our soybeans here so it's nice when we're unloading with a, a drop pit pit because you can just open up the back gate and unload just like instantaneous with this truck really like the bed on this truck Let's get back to the farm and help our cousin get started. So we're pulling in here to our driveway. Uh, where are, is our cousin here? Oh, yep, there she is. So I don't know exactly where she's at, but she's here somewhere. I do really like her truck. Her OBS truck is kind of nice. So definitely a nice truck for her to have. We'll put this under the spout. We won't start it because we need to watch it, but she does not like doing the first headland, so I need to go do the first headland for her. She just doesn't like doing headlands. She's not comfortable yet doing them, so I'm going to do the first headlands and then uh, turn over the reins to her. Alright, so we're started in here. Uh, this cultivator's pretty wide. Uh, looks like we are leaving a little bit on the outside so this uh, tractor pulls this cultivator pretty nicely actually Now my cousin's taken off. Looks like she put her hair up into a bun today, so I think I prefer a ponytail, actually. But that's okay. That's probably her working hair. Uh, let's go get this truck filled up so we can go talk to Jim. Alright, filling her up. Man, this auger is quick. So it's unbelievably quick fills this up. Oh, we gotta shut it off. All right, so we got another load. So if you guys didn't notice, we got a payout of 40,000 for that last load. So that was a good check that'll help around this farm. So if you don't know, my grandpa is still in the hospital. So he did have insurance, but insurance doesn't pay for everything. So I'm worried that I want to get a little bit of money put aside just in case he needs it because as you, if you don't know I mean he this is his farm so we're just pulling in here to the local co-op this is kind of a semi hazard area here because you gotta turn this sharp you gotta turn sharp again 
and got a weasel crew right here so you definitely have to be an experienced semi driver to be able to make them turns pull in right there There we go, dumping a load, a load into the pit. Man, this truck dumps quick. $40,000, so we broke 400k now. All right, let's get back to the farm so we can grab our truck and then hopefully find out where Jim's located at. All right, just driving up to our beautiful farm here. So I think I might go down the road a little bit just to see how she's doing. So, looks like she started already on her third headland though. She's just making sure she has plenty of room to turn around, so she's still moving, so that's a good sign pull into the gate here so we will go park this top kick here quickly and then uh, go grab our dodge Did I tell you guys my uh, cousin is a big gun nut don't mess with her she's packing some serious heat over there so Hi, Buck. You wanted to come with us? Oh, you're just going to stay here? All right, Buck. I kind of, you're kind of weird in the bushes there. So we'll jump into our Dodge here and head over to Jim's. Pull up a map here on the phone. So let's see. Jim is right below field five. Well, that... Well, that's weird. So I guess... Uh, I guess we were like right next to Jim's when we were hauling grain. Huh. I did notice there was a farmyard up there, so we'll head up there. Just love this driveway here. So there's my cousin. So make sure nothing's going amok. So hopefully she comes back and gets in corners, but she's doing a pretty good job. So it appears that this, uh, guess we can make sure she isn't making any ridges here quickly pretty flat that's pretty good so I think this is we can plant into this alright enough messing around we gotta get to Jim's so he doesn't think we are bad with time just heading to Jim's so I'm falling behind a slow station wagon that's for sure I'm in a no passing area now oh man so right on the other side of them grain bins you see off in the distance to the left will be Jim's house all right so we're just pulling up here so, wow he definitely has a nice farmyard Woo! look at all that nice shiny equipment Woo so I think we'll just pull up right here. Wow, just look at all of it. Well, first impressions are pretty good so far, so it seems like it's not a big farmyard, but he uses his space pretty nice. He cleans up his area, that's for sure. Let's go in here and see if we can find him. All right, so we just talked to Jim. He went over basically the contract, what he was thinking. We're kind of thinking the same thing. He'll pay me per job I do, uh, per task, per farm task that is. So whether it's plowing a field, chiseling a field, planting a field, he'll just pay me for that. Uh, it's kind of hit or miss, so I'll be able to run my hay ranch slash cattle ranch pretty easily so I think this will work out nicely it kind of works perfectly for us uh, he did show me around so I'd like to show you guys around just show all his equipment off uh, this kind of impressive equipment he has here 
So he has a 2017 F250 Power Stroke 6.7 liter uh, FX4 edition with the BF Goodriches on. I just think this, with that white uh, metal flake paint job, oh, it just pops, man. That's a good looking truck there. That's his truck, obviously. He has a underfurf uh, telehand or a seed tender, sorry over here so it's kind of nice it's a gooseneck version uh what does he have here this is a 6230 uh this is his kind of little uh chore tractor slash mowing tractor so it's a good tractor to have on the farm just for the little job so you can keep the wear and tear off the bigger tractor he has a john deere hx 15 foot batwing mower there that's kind of nice he has a Great Plains Field Finisher Cultivator. Sorry, this is a field cultivator here. So he says he just loves this cultivator. Just makes the most perfect planting soil. Rolling baskets in the back and everything. So he's very impressed. He just recently got that a couple years ago. Uh, here's one of his older tractors. This 8200. So Primarily, he just uses this to plant nowadays. It's kind of underpowered for his uh, tillage equipment, so it's kind of just a second planting tractor. So, as you see, he has two planters. One set up for split row, basically bean in corn planting here. So, he usually plants corn at a 30 inch rows and beans at a 15 inch. This is a uh, center fill planter here it has two seed boxes on there he has another kinsey planter here so this is set up primarily for corn planting and primarily to get a uh, kickstart uh, seed fertilizer put in there so this kind of helps the seed germinate quickly uh, Gives them a little uh, nitrogen boost, if you want to say, to start growing, stop, start popping through that soil real early. So it's a kind of unique setup. Most of them do it while the planter is running, but this just knifes it in. So this is slightly off from the roll that the seed. So the fertilizer just gets put right beside the seed instead of right on it or right above it or right below it. Uh, he has a 712C 12 row uh, corn head here. Mm. He has a uh, nitrogen bar here, older nitrogen bar, and behind it he has a side dressing bar behind that. So this is his old sprayer he said. He just keeps it around just in case his uh, self-propelled sprayer breaks down, but he still uses it from time to time. Looks like it's a PTO pumped Hardy Navigator 6000. So I think the 6000 means uh, gallons it holds. So it is a row crop addition, so you can use it. And it's uh, high boomed. He has a Great Plains drill. So it says he usually only uses this for now for wheat and maybe some specialty crops. Uh, and some cover crops he plants. Pretty nice Great Plains drills he has. So these are his field cultivators or chisels, more like it, field finishers. So he used this for the first pass every year, puts it through so it has the disc in front so it chops up the residue into fine little uh, lengths so that way it doesn't plug up the planter or the field cultivators later on. Looks like it has drag rakes with it to kind of straighten out the, the cover or the residue. He has this Kuhn Krauss cultivator here, a 5635 field cultivator. So he wasn't too impressed with the seed prep this chisel did with to the soil. So he ended up putting a John Deere 200 uh, uh, rolling baskets on the back and he said that really makes a smooth seed area Let's go into his garage here So he has two beautiful Ford 
9,000. So I just love the grills on these things. They just, from the front appearance of them, they just have a mean stance, I think. So he has two grain trailers here, a Wilson uh, pace setter and a low king on the other side of it over there. Really impressed with his uh, Bobcat telehander here. It's kind of really like the looks of this thing. So he says, surprisingly, this gets used all the time. So he upgraded from a kid steer and got this telehander and just loves it. Uh, I guess we'll go into his main garage or shop here. So here's one of his newest tractors, not the newest, but the second newest, a 9510R. So he upgraded this to pull the grain cart in to be a tillage tractor. Just looks mean. Just look at that thing. The tire's gigantic. Mean looking tractor there. He really likes that. And it actually has a free point on the back, so in a PTO so it can run the grain cart so kind of nice this is his newest tractor so this is his planting tractor primarily so hopefully I get to drive this from time to time at 8345R so kind of a big tr planting tractor but he says he could use it for some tillage too if need be for a backup so pretty impressed with this tractor so nice planting tractor that's for sure so I believe this is a 2016. Don't quote me on that though. Here's a nice tractor for y'all. 8970. So this is a beautiful. So this is primarily just used for tillage. So look at them beasts of tires on the side of it. So just the front stance of these things are so impressive. So, but this is primarily used turns into the primary tillage for spring and fall because the other 9510 is pulling the grain cart. He did change over to Lexion's 760 so he's pretty impressed with their combine. One of the first uh, basically cruise controls for combine and so it basically judges the volume of crop coming in and it sets your speed from that so I know a lot of combines have it now uh, case adopted it recently John Deere before them but class they I believe they were the first ones but I don't think theirs is as advanced as John Deere case he has a gigantic Brent grain cart look at them big tires on there 1596 very impressive grain cart there so he believes in having a sprayer is the most important item, one of the most important item on the farm. So he recently updated his sprayer to an R4045, and this thing is impressive. So spraying nowadays has become more and more important. There's less tillage, less uh, tillage practices uh, taken care of. Spraying at different times at the right time is important so he believes in having a new sprayer on the farm he also uses this to uh, spread dry product fertilizer in the spring and lime when he has to do it so I believe that is it so he ended up taking off did ask if we could uh, start getting the chisels on the tillage tractors so I think let's start with the 95 open this door here start this old girl up huh two screens in this tractor pretty nice so man this thing is so wide I don't know might not fit through the door here Whew. That's close. All right, there we go. Fit through it. Wasn't as close as probably it looked like from our vantage point. So our land all chisels or field prep 
are right in front of us, so... Let's see... Back this up. It seems like I can almost see the drawbar, but I can't. It seems it's maybe right there. It seems like if I they move the weights just slightly, you could probably see the drawbar from here. Oh, looks like we have to back up a little bit farther. There we go. All right, we're hooked up. So. I think I'll leave this running. I'll pull it over there by the flagpole so we can get the 8970 out. Make sure we miss that pole. Where's that pole? All right, we got plenty of space. Pull it over here. Uh, which door? Okay, that door. So... Okay, I think this will be out of the way. All right, so we gotta open this door now. And it looks like the 8970 was in its winter home over there, so... Can we get everything out? We're gonna have to watch that uh, combine unloading auger there, so looks like that tractor might clip it. And we're gonna have to watch out for his new uh, 8R over here so that's gonna be a little zigzag out of this uh, building oh nice starts right up so we're pretty close to that combine over there so all right go forward all right once the cab passes that auger cut it oh man all right, we're gonna have to back it up slightly. That's close. Get a little love tap to that door right there. There we go. Uh, there we go, right out of that building. That wasn't too bad. So we'll back up over here to our chisel. I cannot see the drawbar at all with this uh, tractor, so I think that might be good. Wow. Looks like we're good enough. Alright, so where's that pull at again? Don't want to hit it. Alright, we're plenty far away. Alright, good to go. So, uh, I think maybe I'll put both of the implements side by side here. Unfold them. Because I have to grease them, check all the bearings, check all the hydraulic lines, check the cylinders, check for any cracks in the metal. So I want to be able to walk nicely around them with all the tools, check if we need to change any of the chisel points, unfold this nicely. Hopefully I can finagle that other... Uh, chisel over there behind this okay just about down all right now we'll lower all right we'll shut off all right start up the 9r now Woo. a little bit close to that fence there so uh, yep we'll squeeze over here pull forward and back once go like so unfold there so now we'll back her up oh, a little bit quick don't want to go that fast so leave a little bit of gap so we can walk the tools back and forth and not have to walk around both pieces of equipment lower all right so, like I said before, we need to look at all the hydraulic hoses, make sure we don't see any uh, leaks, make sure we don't have any leaks from the cylinder ends on the pistons. 
Uh, also check all the change. Most importantly, check the tires. Check all the bearings in the tires. Check all the pivot points. Make sure they're greased. Uh, check the bearings in the front uh, sizing disc here. What else? We'll make sure we're at the right uh, depth to start out with. So he says he usually chisels pretty deep uh, early in the spring to hopefully get that ground broken up so we can get in the field sooner. Got to get that ground air into the ground so that field kind of gets warmer quicker. Alright, so them tires are good. Luckily, no tires had to be filled up. Alright, these tires, good, good. So, looks like a few chisel points need to be changed. A few discs might be to need to be swapped out. That's not going to be easy because we got to take the whole section. See, like, this section right here. We got to take that off and put a new disc in, put a new bearing in there while we're at it. Uh, let's, and so I will start greasing. Hopefully when you're greased, if you can't grease something that could cue you in on a bad bearing or a bad pivot point. More importantly, I did not find any cracked metal that I've seen so far, so it's really hard to catch everything because that's a... Uh, pretty heavy piece of equipment a lot of metal uh, welds you gotta look at and pieces of metal but so far these pieces of equipment look in pretty good condition all right so that took a few hours so we got it both done so now I need to fold them up and put them away so we're not gonna start field work today but maybe tomorrow or the next day I really hope I can start planting tomorrow so it's going to be a tough choice. Do I work for Farmer Jim or do I plant my own fields? That's a decision right there. But let's get these put up. So I think I'll pull the older tractor, the 8970, right where I pulled the chisel from. So it looks like I have no bindings in any of the wings or anything, so that's good. They both went up. At the same time, it's another good sign that you don't have one side that has a bypass in the cylinders or possibly isn't greased properly. Alright, back in there up right here. We're just going to keep this backed up just kind of like they were, but we're going to keep it hooked up. Alright, now the 95R I'm going to put in here. Hold the implement up. We're watching to make sure they both go up parallel. We made it in that door nicely. So we'll just pull it in here for its uh, daily resting spot. Alright, now we'll shut these doors. Never be too careful around us. So we are heading home here, so I thought I'd give my cousin a call and see how she's doing. Hey, what's going on? Hey, uh, how is it going? Are you done? I'm all finished and headed home. Oh, you cleaned up the tractor, right? Duh. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. But thanks for the help today. Have a good one. Alright, later. Bye. So we're just headed home. So that was our first day of being a farmhand. So it's kind of nice. I get to play with newer equipment. Still like my old equipment, so I'm not getting rid of it. So don't you guys worry. But, oh, looks like, oh man, got a little bit out of control there. So there she goes right there. So see, I like how she's driving on her side of the road now. That's nice. But thank you all for watching. And I will see you later here in Oregon. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe. See you next time.